My name is Abby Henricks, and this is my biology role model project on Elizabeth H. Blackburn. First, some background information on Elizabeth Blackburn. She grew up in Australia, and she grew up in a family of scientists. Her parents were doctors, and her grandfather was a geneticist. And she grew up really interested in animals. She was found picking up ants and jellyfish um, off the beach by their home in Australia at age four. And she also had a variety of pets like bunnies and fish and chickens growing up. So she definitely had an interest in biology and she became even more interested in biology when she entered school. She attended a private school in middle and high school and then got her undergraduate degree in biochemistry at the University of Melbourne in Australia. And then she began her PhD fellowship at the MCR Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge, England. And when she was asked about her hobbies, Elizabeth said, people who love their work don't need hobbies, work is your hobby. So she's obviously very passionate about biology, but some of the other hobbies I found that she likes to do are Sudoku and playing the piano. So she began her PhD research at Fred Hurd's lab in Cambridge, England, and here they worked on sequencing regions of a small single-stranded DNA bacteriophage called Phi-X174, and this increased her interest in discovering DNA sequencing. After her time in Fred Hurd's lab, she moved to America and began working in Joe Gall's lab at, at Yale University. And there she worked on sequencing DNA found at the terminal regions of the abundant short and linear ribosomal gene carrying micro chromosomes. And this began her research and discovery in telomeres, which is her main um, area of research that she's known for. And this is in the field of biology of genetics. She actually won the Nobel Peace Prize in Medicine or Physiology in 2000. In nine for the discovery of how chromosomes are protected by telomeres and the enzyme telomerase. Telomeres are at the end of chromosomes and they protect it and prevent it from becoming frayed or tangled. And every time a chromosome divides, the telomere gets shorter until there's no chromosome left and then the cell eventually dies. And the research paper that I found that she has been most recently involved in is from 2015 and the title is Automated Essay of Telomere Length Measurement and Informatics for 100,000 Subjects in the Genetic Epidemiology Research on Adult Health and Aging Cohort. And in this um, study, a group of researchers used saliva samples of men and women at different ages to try to determine the trend of telomere length as age progresses, as well as between males and females. They found that there is an overall decrease in average telomere length as people got older, which is what they hypothesized. Males on average have a shorter telomere length than female telomeres, and men had a consistent decline in telomere length until around age 80, whereas females had a decline until around age 50, and then until age 80, it remained relatively consistent. And then at age 80, there was a reverse trend in telomere length, and it actually increased um, for both males and females. They, found, they also found that telomere length varied among individuals within age, but did not actually increase within an individual. And the figure that I found in the research paper showed the difference between male and female telomere length. Um, female is in the red and men is in the black. So as I said before, there's a steady decline in male telomere length until age 80 and in females until about age 50, and then it's consistent. And then they both rise around age 80. And men, and in general, had a shorter telomere length than females, which is consistent with this graph. And now Elizabeth Blackburn works as a professor at the University of California, San Francisco, and she has her own research lab there in the Department of Microbiology and Immunology, where she works with other postdocs inside and outside of UCSF, as well as, well as her students and other PhD fellows. And she is just continuing her research on telomeres and telomerase, which is an ongoing um, discovery for her. I think that Elizabeth's research is really inspirational and just shows how hard work and commitment to a field of science will end in discovery. This is a huge discovery in cancer research and just overall knowledge about chromosomes. So I thought that was really cool.